Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Fashion Your Passion podcast. This week, I am here with mindset and motivation coach, one of my favorites, also who is a podcast host, Meg Johnson is here. Meg, welcome to the show. Hi, Sammy. Thanks so much for having me. Of course. Can you just get my listeners a little bit more into what you do now and your journey to get to this point? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, where to start? <laughs> um, so as you said, I'm a mindset and motivation coach. Um, so I help 20 something women to invest in themselves and start to uh, grow their wealth and abundance. Um, so I, I've started uh, a, my own business. It's called Maggie Louise, um, but I have it. There's a few different parts of my business. So one of them is uh, I run an investment blog where I help people to, uh, as it sort of says on the tin, invest not only in themselves, but also invest in their wealth and invest in their future. So I'm also uh, an investor, so which is something that I've sort of started doing over the last year. And much to my surprise, despite not having any necessary mathematical backgrounds, I seem to be pretty good at it, which is quite cool. So I'm really enjoying that. So I, I help people to build an, their own online empire, uh, meanwhile, growing their confidence. So that's one of the things that I do. Um, the other is that I... As you said, I run a podcast, which is very new, uh, which is called the Thrive Life Project podcast. And that's trying to discover and by talking to all sorts of different people, I love speaking to new people around the globe and just trying to figure out what thriving really means because it means different things to different people. And I just love hearing people's journeys and what they've learned and all these little characteristics and different pieces of the puzzle that come together to make thriving um so it's like this ethereal thing that people sort of feel um so that's what my podcast is about which i'm really enjoying um the other thing that i do is uh i've set up 20 thrive uh which is it uh, provides courses it provides resources and mindset and motivation coaching for 20 something women to help them get unstuck move forward start growing their abundance and their self-worth and it's like a personal development thing uh that I've been running for 20 something so there's a few different things that I do but (laughs) no very multifaceted and multi-passionate I can definitely resonate with that I do a few different things you know on top of this podcast that you know are under the same general area but are also very very different so I totally understand that um like how did this all start like where were you like oh my gosh I want to do you know I want to become a coach I want to start a podcast like just tell me the whole story um so my story is a bit I I guess uh I would say like round the houses a little bit in the sense that um I went to university and I actually did a history and ancient history degree in the UK and I originally really loved the subject that I did but in my second year, I sort of lost my way uh, and I sort of became a little bit disillusioned with the education system. Mm-hmm. And I sort of realized that I went to university not necessarily because I really wanted to and I thought it would, and the fact that it would help me get to where I sort of saw myself going, but because everyone else that I knew saw was going to university. So I thought, oh, you know what, mm, I'll go. I kind of enjoy this subject, so I'll go and do it. And I did enjoy it for about a year and a half to two years. And then as I say, <laughs> it sort of went a bit off track, a little, yeah, which uh, wasn't so easy. But um, I, at that time in my second year of university, decided, okay, I need a new goal. I'm quite a goal-focused person. I need something to aim towards. Uh, and I actually decided at that time, you know what, I'm going to go into the military as an officer, and which is quite bizarre. So <laughs> I went through all of my officer um application passed it with flying colors and everything it was sort of set on that and and that I do attribute to getting me through my degree I did actually finish my degree um, and I had this plan even to after my degree that I would go into the military as an officer but it was quite a, a funny time really because within that year I started teaching students online around the globe I started teaching them English and I realized, oh wait, this is something that I'm actually really good at. It's something I'm really passionate about. It's sort of touched on my humanitarian side. And I decided, okay, you know what? 
this is so random, but I'm going to look into doing a master's at university, which is something I never thought I would do. After I left, I was like, no, I am done with the education system. This is it. The career, you know, going into the careers for me. And then I ended up going back to university and doing a master's in education. So <laughs> how weird is life? Um, so I went and did that and I got a first, um, which was very different to my first degree because I uh, was just under a 2-1. So I got a 2-2 two -two in my, my original degree, which <laughs> it's not so great. But I actually came out of my master's with a first class, uh, which is so crazy for me. Um, and then... I went and worked with a startup for a while in the ed tech industry, sort of more corporate. Uh, and I really enjoyed it, worked with schools, did project management, product management, all sorts of different things, lots of different skills. But part of me just felt, I really want to be my own boss. I want to be able to work from my sofa, slouch in my pajamas while I'm working. You know, I really want to be able to travel. I'm an absolute travel bug. I just love tra trotting the globe. Um, so I wanted to be able to do that. So last year I decided uh, I wanted to start my own business and then COVID hit, which wasn't exactly the best time. Um, <laughs> so I decided uh, instead that before setting up my own business, which I did towards the end of last year, I would teach myself new skills and just completely up level all of my skills and teach myself new things. So I learned how to use Adobe Suite. I learned how to do um, social media management, which I am, you know, is totally out of my realm of <laughs> comfort. Um, I learned to do stocks and shares trading and I, I just up leveled my entire life, uh, which I absolutely love doing. So I am a self-development addict now. It's just something I love to do. Um, and I absolutely love helping other people. I am a humanitarian at heart. Um, I get very passionate about helping other people develop their skills and really become the best that they can be uh, and improve their potential. Yeah. I love that. I have to say we are very, very similar people um, for about, what, geez, six, seven years of my life, I thought I wanted to be a teacher um turns out that I actually didn't um and then you know now in college I am uh you know pursuing the entrepreneurial journey if you would call it um and just going out and helping others and that's what I'm just committed to now um and it's just it's so inspiring to hear that like you just you were just able to like commit to yourself for a second. You said, I'm just going to up level every single aspect of my life, you know, and just, just become a new version of myself. So what was that process like for you? You know, you went after new skills, you learned new things, but like how, especially the mindset of it all, like how did you, um, you know, really commit and like double down and say, this is what I'm going to do no matter what. So, um, I think it's quite a useful skill that I sort of developed over time because when I was 17 through to probably about 1920, I went through quite a, like, a bad mental health time. Um, like I was quite depressed. I had serious anxiety to the point where I would like just break out into tears and it was so completely not not me and you know things happened at the time like family issues and stuff like that which usually is that's the thing that sets these things off right <laughs> oh, yeah. um, so that's sort of hit for two and a half to three years and it was at that time that I realized uh you know what I'm much stronger than I think because I went and got myself therapy like privately I paid for it myself I had a job at the time that I've worked since I was 14 um and I just, I've, I've sort of known all along that that part of myself was there, that I, I could sort of break through difficult times if I needed to. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I've sort of built up a bit of a mental resilience over the years, um, particularly through, through that time when I was 17, 18. But when it came to like developing that mindset, um, I just, I, can't help myself I have to keep learning I have to keep doing things I 
I am one of those things where I love being a girl boss, but one of my flaws is that I get bored easily. So <laughs> I um, I love learning new skills and the more skills I know that I can learn, the more things that I can do, I can sort of start things and then I'll be like, okay, all right, I know that I'm going to get bored. I know myself yeah. to the point where, right, I'm going to go and hire myself a VA or an assistant or something now. Um, and they can sort of take that on for me. <laughs> um but I think in terms of mindset development and, and knowing yourself, it's something that you, it's usually the hard times that really get uh, get you realizing what you're capable of. And I think we, a lot of people think I need to steer away, off, away from failure. Um, and that's where I think that so many people go wrong there because we have to fail so that we can improve ourselves, that we can learn where our limits are. We can learn then how we can break through those barriers and again, up level. Um, you don't know where to improve if you don't know where your limits are and you can only up level when you know what you can't do. And I just think that's such an important part of life. <laughs> no, a thousand percent. And I definitely think that, you know, past experience is like, I don't know how many times I'm going to say it, but we are very, very similar. Um, <laughs> And I think that past experiences definitely shape your strength and they definitely shape, you know, how you become. And they, yes, there are so many ways you can sort of alter that in a sense where it's like you can, you know, help yourself for the better. Um, but there are like, they're just things that are just going to impact you no matter what. Um, and I definitely a thousand percent resonate with that. Um, but I want to, I move like, you know, in addition to that, um, I feel like a lot of the sort of up leveling and having that mindset of like, I am actually strong because of what I've gone through already is that piece of like building resilience. So like, what does resilience mean to you? You know, sort of how do you help your clients sort of build that resilience? And like, how have you built it in your own life? And that's an interesting one, because I think, again, just like with thriving, resilience is different to different people and you can build it in so many different ways um the thing about resilience is that it does for the most part i think come from experiential learning you experience something you process it and then you use that to improve yourself learn something learn something about yourself um and then use that to move forward um, but in my own life, I think I've built resilience by, first of all, telling myself that, you know what, failing is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Seeing failure as a means of improvement, again, see, seeing where my limits are. And then when I know where those limits are, I can improve on that. I can become a better version of myself. I think, and I know this from so many people that I've spoken to, they see failure as it characterizes them if they fail. Yeah. And if I speak to any of my clients, you know, any of my students, I always tell them, you know what, failing, it's not a bad thing. It's actually yes. a really good thing. Because if you accept failure and you accept that you're going to fail at times, you become so much more at peace with yourself. Mm -hmm. You stop putting that pressure on yourself to always be perfect. I mean, we are all imperfect. <laughs> no one's perfect. Yeah. And, you know, in order to build resilience, I think we have to realize that. Mm -hmm. And that in an, internally, that gives us strength in knowing that, you know what, I'm imperfect, but I'm going to keep striving to be better. Uh, and that just, that's what I think gets me up in the morning and gets me doing what I do. Yes. I love that a lot because you're so right. It's like failure is one of the best things that could ever happen to a person, no matter what people say about, uh, obviously successes are, but like failure is one of the best things because the lessons you learn from failing, the, the, the strength that we mentioned before that you get from failing, it all just encapsulates in itself. And I think that, you know, learning that lesson is something that is so key to moving forward with your life. So what would you say to someone who's like, I am so scared to fail. I don't know. It's like, it's like debilitating. Like, what would you say to them? I think 
it's very interesting when it's something that, as I say, when, when it characterizes someone and it physically stops them from doing things, because that's the, the one thing with failure that I have noticed. And even with, with friends and family, you see it too, over and over again, they'll say to you, I can't do that because if I'm scared, of, I'll fail. And if I fail, that shows that I am just like worthless. I can't do anything. And whenever I hear that the first thing that pops into my head and I guess I feel like I get this little light bulb that kind of comes above my head is you've got to say to them you don't know if you don't try and you don't know what you're capable of if you don't figure out what you can do from what you can't do because if you could do everything how boring would life be if you could just do everything straight off the bat? Some things we're more natural at. I mean, I was always quite good at sports when I was at school and I could sort of naturally pick things up and, and go for it, you know, and I figured I was quite good at it. But when it came to other things, I knew that I wasn't so good at those things. Like my best friend, she could draw things amazingly. And I was like, God, I wish I could draw as good as she does. It looks realistic. Mine just looks like a three-year-old's like doodle, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but I I kept practicing and I kept doing it. And I think if someone comes to me and says, you know, I, I'm so, it's debilitating. It's baby steps. It's really small steps. Don't throw yourself into the deep end because that will just not solve the problem whatsoever. Um, it's a case of doing something small and sort of chipping away at it and over time you'll realize that you can take slightly you know smaller steps and then bigger strides and then eventually you'll be like me and you're going you know what let's just give it a go and you'll just take a running jump and see where you end up yes yes that is so 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 true and I think that um it's about that sort of like the initial first step, you know, where you have, maybe you have no fear in that first step and you just go for it. And then you develop that fear, but you're like, wait, you're like, I already started it. So I got to keep going, you know? And it's like having that cycle just become bigger and gaining more momentum. It's, it's a beautiful thing, you know, sort of once you, once you surpass being like, okay, like, you know what, screw it. Like, let me just do it. And like, we'll see what happens. So I want to know, like, Because based off, like, when you start something and you just go for it, like, you eventually will thrive in some way, shape, or form. And we've thrown that word around a few times over this episode, but I want to know, like, what your, like, true definition is of thriving and, like, based off of the conversations you had on your podcast, like, you know, how how has that impacted your definition? And just talk about, like, just what it means to you to thrive in life. I think that's a really interesting question and I think that's exactly why I started my podcast because I don't think I mean there's obviously a literary definition for thrive right but it's such a personal thing some people would prefer for example to have happiness over money they don't care about money they'd rather just be happy they've got their family they've got you know a basic living and that's cool for them that's fine Some people see thriving as, you know what, I have to have the CEO job in a business and I have to have lots of money in a sports car and a big mansion and that sort of thing. And I think it's such a personal thing to different people that, you know, grasping what thriving is, is not something that anyone will ever fully agree on. Because for example, my idea of thriving might be different, completely different to your idea of thriving, or it might be slightly different, but it's still different. Yeah. Thriving to me personally is being able to, I, as I say, I love traveling. Um, I love being able to do the things that make me happy, but earn money for them at the same time. Uh, I really have a bee in my bonnet about my time being worth like 10 pounds an hour. Like for me, I'm just like, Mm-mm, you know, I just don't go by that anymore. And I think, I don't know if that was uh, conditioned into me because I had a job since I was like 14. As soon as I could get a job, I got a job and was saving money and going out with my girlfriends and spending it on weekends and that sort of thing. And you know, last year, something just clicked in my head and I thought, you know what, this isn't what I want. You know, I had a, I had a decent job with a company, but 
I was working nine till five or later, sometimes doing overtime and things like that. And I was stressed a lot of the time. And I just thought, is this making me happy? Yeah. No, you know, it's not, it's not. And it, I didn't feel like it was pushing me in the way that I wanted to go. It was developing skills in certain areas, but I really wanted to move in a different way. And I think for me, thriving is I'm doing something I love, which is blogging, talking to people, you know, across the world. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's evening here and it's, you know, alcoholic beverage time for me <laughs> and it's coffee in the morning time for you, you know. Yeah. Um, and I just love that I'm able to do that and, and do that from anywhere in the world. Yes. And I definitely think that, you know, it's powerful when you can get to the point in your life where you can ask yourself, is this thing making me really happy? Is this thing bringing me joy in my life? Because then that's when you're like, oh crap, like I actually need to audit my life and take a look at it and say, what can I do instead of X to achieve the joy that I've been wanting since, you know, since the day I was born or whatever it is, you know? I think it just, it's powerful to do that. And on top of that, this conversation has been, has blown me away. I feel so inspired to just go after the things that I wanted to do. Um, But before we roll into the final question, I want you to tell everyone where they can find you, where they can find the podcast, on the web, on social, all the places. Go for it. Okay, so uh, you can find me on Instagram at Maggie Louise Johnston, a couple of underscores between those three names. Um, you could also find the podcast at the Thrive Life Project podcast. You can find that on Instagram too. It's just Thrive Life Project podcast. Um, and you can find my coaching website at www.20thrive.com where you can find resources. There will be courses coming soon and coaching programs for 20 something women who want to get unstuck, move forward and grow their grow their wealth and uh and their future selves um the other thing is my blog which is at www.maggielouise.com and that's my investment blog where i talk about you know all the crazy things i'm up to building an online empire and all those sorts of things so come find me on those and come say hi yes and all of her links will be down below so do not worry you can go in the show notes and click on the link and it'll take you right to her uh her page For the final question of the podcast, this is a question that I've asked every single guest who has ever been on. Uh, So based off the title, which is fashion, your passion, what is one tip that you would give those who are dreaming based off of how you have fashioned your passion? So one tip for people to fashion their passions. Mm -hmm. I think my one tip would be as young an age as possible, figure out what you don't like doing because that'll help you figure out your why. And the earlier you can figure out what you don't like, because let's face it, we all know what we don't like to do. Mm -hmm. The quicker you will figure out what your passion is, what your why is, And that will really help you to figure out a path of getting to where you want to be. I wish I had done that earlier. I mean, I'm 20, I mean, I'm not old. I'm 25, I'm 26 next week. And, um, you know, I've only just figured out what I really want to do. And I wish I had done that when I was younger. And I am seeing more and more things on social media now where people younger than me are figuring out their why and what they, and they're going for what they want to do. And that would be my tip figure out what you don't like because you'll then figure out what you do like very soon after. Absolutely. I a hundred percent agree. I literally can't agree more. Meg, thank you so much for coming on the pod today. This has been an amazing, amazing episode. I am super excited for my listeners to tune in. And on that note, if you are listening, be sure to screenshot it, tag Meg and I on Instagram And let us know what you learned in this episode. And I will talk to you guys next week.